On this edition of Fulton Law and Justice, Fulton's solicitor lays out the health ordinance penalties for restaurant inspection violators, details in our restorative justice segment, and sheriff's deputies put out a jail fire just days after practicing for a real emergency during a cold red evacuation drill. I'm Douglas Bell, these stories and more when Fulton Law and Justice begins after the break. Stay with us. Welcome to Fulton Law and Justice, your inside look at the work of Fulton's justice partners. I'm Douglas Bell. We begin with the growing environmental health concerns in various Fulton County communities and what justice partners can do to address these issues. We're talking about everything ranging from illegal dumping to even cases involving animal cruelty. It's the focus of this restorative justice segment. Hello, I'm Kenya Johnson, Deputy Solicitor General. The Fulton County Solicitor General's Office prosecutes health code violations as a part of our environmental calendar in Fulton's Magistrate Court. When there has been repeated violations, an inspector issues a health code citation and the owner must appear in court. Two of our partners with the Environmental Health Division of the Fulton County Board of Health are Deputy Director Eli Jones and Senior Specialist Justin Robinson. Thank you for joining us. Thank you, Thank you for having us. Now, can you tell us exactly what does Environmental Health Services do? Uh, with Environmental Health, we regulate, um, inspect, investigate complaints, uh, anything that we have a permit on. So it could be a food service establishment, it could be a restaurant, it could be a food truck, it could be a temporary event like a festival. We also permit all the tourist accommodations, so that's a hotel or a motel. Any type of public pool, we permit those also. Body art studios and the body artists, we also permit those. Uh, on top of that, we have a mosquito program where we help abate mosquitoes uh, in the public and around senior citizens. Anywhere there's a highly susceptible population, like a park or senior citizens, we spray for that also. We have a rat abatement program. We inspect wells, on-site sewage management systems, also known as septic systems. So now tell me, why are all the rules under environmental services uh, so important to Fulton County citizens? They're important uh, for us to maintain the health and safety of all our citizens here and also to prevent any spread of disease. And so uh, as an inspector, can you tell us what do you look for when you go to a site? How do you receive uh, complaints or how do you come to a particular site to inspect? And yeah, Well, it varies. It depends on the location I'm going to. If I'm going to a restaurant, I'm going out there checking to make sure your hands are being washed, that temperatures of food are being maintained and cooked to the proper temperatures. Uh, when I'm going to places like hotels, I'm looking at linen. I'm also looking at air filters. Uh, when we go to pools, we're also checking to make sure the water quality is good and also the physical structures that are in place to protect you and keep you safe. So pools, hotels, and restaurants, all things that many citizens in Fulton County enjoy regularly. So thank you for that impactful work uh, and for keeping us safe. Can you tell us how can uh, citizens report violations? What are citizens to look for? And we encourage our citizens to go out and uh, look at health scores uh, of our restaurants, also the health scores of our pools and of our tourist accommodations. So they get scored also as we go out and look, and that tells the level of safety that they're following. So what type of health score should we be looking for as acceptable? And can you share with us some of uh, the extreme circumstances you've seen? Well, yes. Uh, starting with the extreme circumstances, uh, we go out often and places uh, fail to have power or fail to have water. Uh, a lot of places also uh, will have food that's been left out, and we really encourage them to discard all those foods. That's the reason why we go out and do inspections, to prevent that from being sold to people here in the public and causing them to be sick. Um, another thing that we look for when we go out too, we're checking things as far as like employee health too. We don't want someone out there who is sick serving you food. So um, we're checking that, and that does happen more than, more than often uh, in, in here in Fulton County. Well, uh, many people love to travel. Mm -hmm. What to look for when you go to a hotel? Um, with the hotel, when you're checking in, they also have a score, and a lot of people don't realize that. It's like a health food score. So they should have the score behind the counter where you check in, and you want to see if they have a score, if it's high. Um, obviously, just like in grade school, an A is good, a B is okay, 
you get down to a C or below, you know, you're at your own risk. When you check in, um, first thing you do before you put any of your stuff down, you want to check the bed. Are the linens clean? Are the pillow cases clean? You want to check around the nightstand, the headboard. You also want to check around the curtains. Those three last spots that I just uh, explained, which is the curtains, the headboard, and the nightstand, that's where the most likely spots you're going to catch a bed bug. So if you see anything, go back to management and inform them, hey, yeah, I'm not sure about this room. And then obviously call us, and then we'll get out there and check it as soon as possible. Well, I am certainly taking notes uh, for my next hotel stay. Mm -hmm. Tell us, what are some of the extreme circumstances you've seen here in Fulton County in hotels? Um, with the extreme circumstances, um, first, it depends on the area in Fulton County. Um, it can vary. Uh, as you know, from top to bottom, it's almost 90 miles from Palmetto all the way um, up to Alpharetta and Johns Creek. Uh, with that, we've been in some places where there has been water leaks, and you check the place, and obviously there's mold in the walls. Well, you obviously you have to shut it down. Other ones have been extreme circumstances where there might be bed bugs in the hotel. And when that happens, we immediately go in and inform management and the owners. They can't rent that room out. They get a professional pest care, um, pest control company, uh, not themselves. It has to be provided with the paperwork. We have to see it sprayed. Then we come out and recheck it. Recheck it, excuse me. And after we recheck it, then it's okay for them to rent those rooms out. Until then, they can't rent any other rooms out. Wow. Well, so uh, that's a lot to digest. Uh, <laughs> when it comes to pools, uh, what are some of the uh, things that citizens should be aware of before they jump in the water? And before you jump in the water, we always ask that you check to make sure they're properly permitted and open by the Fulton County Board of Health. Uh, also, we ask that uh, you check in uh, monitoring chlorine, asking the lifeguard when the last time it was checked, and also looking for that score to be there. Um, we uh, encourage people to also make sure they identify where the phones are as far as the emergency call buttons if something were to happen there and also to utilize the showers uh, when going in and out of the pool area. So when you do an inspection and you determine that there are violations and that you actually want to make a case, can you take us through uh, that process? Yes. Um, well, we encourage you, one, to call in if there's a complaint that you have uh, on a facility. Uh, you can call any of the districts. Uh, and also, we encourage you to go online to the Fulton County Board of Health website to also uh, get information on uh, what's supposed to be in place and who you need to contact as well. And it's going to determine, when we go out there, it determines if we shut them down or if they get a violation or if they get a notice of violation. Is it a critical item or non-critical item? It can be something minor that they can fix on the site, just correct it on site. But if it can't be corrected on site, then we'll take additional um, measures to bring them into compliance. Well, so what happens in a court case once you've issued a citation and contacted the owner? Okay, when, um, depending on the, if it's a critical violation and also the program it's in. Uh, with food services, they might make a U multiple times and we have to bring them into the magistrate court. Or it might be a violation. Most recently, we had a restaurant who they scored okay. Um, not an A, but they scored a B. They weren't happy with a B, but it was a violation where their refrigeration unit was out. The inspector came back eight months later, the refrigeration is out again, same cooler. A third time, according to the rules and regulations, if you don't fix it after three times, even though you pass a score, it's a critical violation, so we had to take them to magistrate court. When they get to magistrate court, um, we provide all the details. The inspector will do a detailed chronological write-up. Um, we'll send it to you guys, uh, and then you have all their information, then we'll have the inspector show up who issued it, and any other inspector that might be a witness will show up also. Then it goes to court. Um, usually there might be some negotiation um, with the fees. Um, maybe they don't think they need more fees, so we'll offer them a more routine inspection. And instead of getting an inspection every six months, maybe they've been in more recent, so they'll get three inspections every three months. Um, and it just depends on that. Then it goes to the judge, and the judge decides if it's fair, if it needs to be more harsh or more lenient. So please tell our viewers how the Board of Health and the Office of the Fulton County Solicitor General work together to achieve these results uh, and get people in compliance. Uh, well, uh, to give an example, recently we've gone out and done night inspections with our night team 
And uh, going out, we found illegal vendors. Uh, so what we do is we compile our information after citing these illegal vendors for serving food without a uh, proper food service permit. Mm -hmm. And uh, we submit that to our solicitor general here for them to develop the case. And uh, we show up in court with them to uh, make sure that uh, everything is being held with, uh, is dealt properly to them so that they can reach compliance. Well, tell us, how can people get involved with the Board of Health? Uh, should they have any questions or want to uh, engage you all in any way? Um, right now, we, our staff members, our inspectors, we have just under 40 inspectors. Obviously, um, that's not a lot when we have 6,000 food service permits that we issue and have to regulate on a regular basis. So the more eyes, the more ears we can have in the community, if they see anything wrong, whether it's a food service restaurant, a hotel, motel, pool, body art studio, um, overrun rats at an abandoned building, solid waste, which is an old sofa, a washing machine, anything like that is left at a vacant lot. We can go after the owners, our owners, and try to get them to clean it up. But they have to let us know because, obviously, it's a giant place. It's very populated. But the more people can call in, they can call 404-613-1303 and let us know, and it helps our job so we can go right to the source and get it fixed. Well, thank you all so much for being with us today. Uh, you've shared a great deal of information. Uh, I hope our viewers will know that there are uh, restaurant scores and hotel scores, and uh, we'll all be more vigilant as we travel about, and thank you all for your work. If you have questions about the county's environmental health policies and guidelines, check out the Board of Health's website and click on the Environmental Health tab at the top of the page. For more information about the Fulton County Solicitor's Office, you can reach us at Office of the Fulton County Solicitor General at 404-612-4800, or you can reach us on our website at FultonRestorativeJustice.org. As we close, we invite you to join our website and social media. Be sure to sign up and receive the Gamage Report, our quarterly newsletter. For Restorative Justice, I'm Kenya Johnson. Thanks, Kenya. We'll be right back with important public safety updates from the Sheriff's Office. Stay with us. Fulton County Sheriff's deputies implement the lessons learned during their evacuation drills to put out a jail fire before firefighters got to the scene. Before we show you actual video from that incident, FGTV's Brian Robison takes us to the early summer evacuation in the county's Alpharetta Jail. After receiving the message, these sheriff deputies quickly put on their safety gear before informing inmates it's time to evacuate. Thankfully, in this instance, there was no fire and the smoke was fake. The Sheriff's Office calls this a co-red mass evacuation drill that involved EMS and fire as well as the Alpharetta and Roswell Police Departments. Uh, we need to have these at least uh, once or twice a year to keep us in good practice and good form just in case we have an actual emergency where we have to evacuate the, the jail. After the inmates were evacuated from their cells, they were led to a transport van. However, while en route, another unexpected scenario occurred. Oh. Once the injured received help and everyone was accounted for, the transport van raced to a nearby facility with the help of a police escort. Okay, broken up unit. Uh, if you're going to make mistakes, uh, now is the best time to make them when it's just practice. Uh, so that will cut down on any, any negative things happening you know, uh, when we actually do have an emergency situation. Right here, right here. The Lieutenant Colonel also said drills like this are important, especially for new employees. We, we have to keep prepared because we, we do have attrition that we have to deal with. So we have new people coming in uh, to the Sheriff's Office. Um, so they may not or may not uh, have that in the, as a part of their training. So uh, we have to do it every now and then to make sure that all the employees know what to do in case we have a serious uh, mass evac situation and we have to evacuate all the inmates out of the facility. 
Since there have been instances across the country where inmates have perished in fires, Fulton Sheriff deputies are doing their part to ensure their facilities are safe for both inmates and staff. Now the Sheriff's Office did say they had a pretty good drill overall. Deputies and other agencies involved did get together for an after action meeting to evaluate the drill. Reporting for FGTV, I'm Brian Robinson. Thanks, Brian. Colonel Mark Adger from the Fulton County Sheriff's Office joins us now to talk about the drill and the real fire that the drill training helped to contain. Thanks for joining us. Hi, Douglas. Thanks for having me. So we understand that your staff was able to mitigate a potentially dangerous fire not that long after your training evacuation. Tell us about it. Yes, about a week before the actual fire incident, we had a mass evac uh, drill at our Alpharetta facility, which we exercise uh, regularly at all of our facilities, including here at the main jail. So staff is aware of what to do in the event of smoke and fire. And as it turns out, having the drill and then having an actual fire emergency really um, show the importance of how training is so very important uh, for us to do our jobs here to keep everyone safe. Amazing. So staff was able to put the fire out before firefighters arrived. This speaks to why it's critical for jail staff to train for emergencies, correct? It's absolutely critical that jail staff train for emergencies to do both the fire extinguishment so that we can limit property damage and risk to human life, but also execute the emergency plan and remove uh, inmates from the hazard area so that no one is injured and we can keep an orderly environment. The other critical mission is to manage the inmates. Tell us about how training helped with this. Well, as part of our training, we have to also be aware that fire is sometimes used as a subterfuge for inmates to do other things that go against the security of the jail. So staff is trained to not only handle the fire emergency itself, but also maintain order with the inmates. Uh, usually that means keeping dangerous inmates away from their intended victims so that we can maintain order here at the jail. And you have the surveillance video as well. Will you use this video for future training opportunities? You know, having the surveillance video from the, from the actual fire emergency, we can feed that back into our training program so that staff can see how they reacted, what their strong suits were, what their weaknesses were, so that we can improve on those weaknesses and exploit our strengths. So yes, uh, it, it also helps new employees that have never been in a COVID mass evac or an actual fire emergency see what those emergencies are like and then they can, uh, we can plan their training so that they can get the experience needed to uh, help us in the future with, uh, with future fire emergencies. Final thoughts, sir? Yes, I would just, I'd like to uh, extend my appreciation to staff here at the jail for doing their job so very well. Uh, they're consummate professionals. Um, by the time I got here, uh, everything had been properly handled. Uh, the fire department was uh, complimentary of the fact that the fire had been put out and that staff had acted quickly and safely to bring this event to a successful conclusion. So I, I, I just want to extend my appreciation to my staff. This was certainly training at its best. Thank you for your time. And thanks again for having me. Meanwhile, young men inside the county's main jail hear from a former inmate about the importance of staying on the right track after being released. DJ Blue from the radio station Streets 94.5 explained to the 17-year-old inmates that there's more to life than being in a gang and committing crimes. The juveniles are very young and impressive, and, and most of them like rap music. He's a DJ, so I want to show them that they can get out of the jail, and do something positive with their lives. DJ Blue also encouraged the group to take advantage of the second chance that's coming their way. Because I, I was their age. I was in and out of Wright Street since 17, and so I felt like it was only right for me to come back like, and talk to kids, especially young kids who, who don't have really guidance right now, who need guidance. And since his audience were all fans of hip-hop, 
the former Fulton County inmate and current record label owner, said they are welcome to visit and use his recording studio after they've served their time. We'll be right back. Fulton County has committed itself to serving its residents in six priority areas. The strategic goal for Fulton's justice partners is making sure that all people are safe. On Fulton Law and Justice, we show you how Fulton's law enforcement and justice partners are doing that every day in how they serve and in the programs they provide to enhance the lives of all people, young and old. Well, we hope you've enjoyed this edition of Fulton Law and Justice. I'm Douglas Bell. We'll see you next time.